Hey guys, looks like it's time for a beer. What do you think? I think so. Yeah. Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer, this is one that uh, Barrick sent us up from uh, from Florida. This is St. Somewhere Brewing Company. This is their Lectio Divina. This is an amber ale, bottle conditioned, coming in at 8% alcohol. It says handcrafted Belgian style ale, guys. They're out of uh, Tarpon Springs, Florida. And that's all the info that is on that label. There is no dating that I see on the bottom. And it's got a whole lot of stuff written on the back of the label in tiny little letters that I'm not going to even attempt to read off. Uh, this beer is, uh, like I said, a, a Belgian style. But what they've done, according to what I've read on this, it is a cross between an Abbey Double and a Saison. It's open fermentation with a Saison strain and a dose of wild yeast at bottling, which adds to the complexity of the beer. So we'll see where this ends up, guys. Uh, 8%, like I said, year-round availability on uh, this one. And uh, he uh, and Barrett posted uh, what this costs. And I'm, if I remember right, I'm thinking this one was like a $15 bottle. So it's fairly pricey, but uh, if it's a good beer, uh, this big of a bottle, $7.50, that's a wine bottle. So, I mean, that's... Uh, you're going to probably pay that for a good bottle of wine that size. So, with that being said, we'll get on with this one. The food pairings cuisine is a curried and a Thai food. The cheeses are earthy, Camembert, Fontina, your nuttier cheeses, Asiago, Colby, Fontina, uh, Gorgonzola, and Limburger even go with it. And the meat for this is poultry, fish, and shellfish. The glassware is a pint, the Becker, the Stein. The tulip, oversized wine glass, the nonic, the tumbler, just about anything you want to pour it in. I could have pulled out the pint glass, but with 8%, I kind of want to go with the double glass on this one. So that's what I did. And, and of course, the beer being 8% and not being a hot forward beer should sell very well. So without further ado, let's get the cage off of this thing and get the cork at the bottle. Barrett, thanks for sending this one up. This one, from what I've read, Ah, and now we know, right here. I took the cage off, and if, if the cork is correct, it says 2010 vintage right on top of the cork underneath the cap there. So that lets you know. This one, and the, and the cork is trying to come out of the bottle already. It's already went up. It's coming out by itself slowly. It's already raised up an eighth of an inch since I took the cage off of it. So it's fairly well carbonated. I hope it don't spew all over the place. But as you can see, it's already up almost a quarter of an inch so it shouldn't be any problem getting this one out so oh yeah and like a bottle of champagne wow I don't think I've ever seen one with quite that much carbonation so I'm not going to pour it super aggressive and this is bottle condition too so I don't want a ten finger head smell it from here. Wow, wow, wow. Over into the light, it is very cloudy, out of condition. I can hear it fizzing from here. It's almost like a champagne. Look, the head is all gone now. It is very much like a champagne. Super effervescent. It is a cloudy cranberry color. Almost like a real dark iced tea. Looks very good. Smells very fizzy. I must, uh, I could hear it fizzing when I was holding it. I'm going, wow. Then I looked and the head was gone. It dissipated. There's none left. Wow. Very much like a, a soda or, or champagne or, or something very effervescent. So let's get a nose on it, guys. Wow. 
candied sugar, uh, dark fruit, figs, grapes, raisins. Wow, what a, what a combination. Caramel, toffee. Very candied sugar smelling too, very sweet smelling. And it's, it's like I got a little like volcano coming through the center of the glass. That's probably the etching in the bottom of the Dubai glass causing that. But it's, in the center of the glass, it's just it's just fizzing up in the, in the middle of the glass there. There's no way that I could bring that over and even show you that, guys. But it, trust me, very interesting. Very effervescent, but you see the head is gone. Didn't, didn't stick around long, maybe 20 seconds after I poured it. Cheers. Very, very unique beer, no doubt. Very strange taste. It's got a tartness to it. Got just a little bit of that funk in it, too. More in the taste. Got the Saison taste, but with the wild yeast in there. Very, very unique beer. Not overly tart. This is one of the beers that you would probably buy and put away and break it out for a special occasion to share with some friends or something. This wouldn't be something you would want to want to pop out and drink by yourself. This is one of those shareable beers like a, like a bottle of wine, you know what I'm saying, or, or a fine bottle of beer. Maybe like a Utopia or something like that. So, wasn't quite that expensive, like I said. I think he told me it's around 15 bucks. I might be mistaken. It's on yesterday's review, so we can go back and take a look and see what it is. He got the price on all the beers that was listed on there. So, guys, we're going to let it warm up just a tad and share some of this and come back and do the final show with that and see what else we get as it warms up. So, stick around. I'll be right back. All right, guys, got just a little, maybe just a little bit more. This is a, this is a very different beer, but it's a tasty beer. It's not to the tartness that turns me off not being a big lambic or sour fan, so. It's got such a different taste than a normal Saison with the tartness and the dark fruit that's in with the, the funkiness of the Saison yeast. But with the the wild yeast chucked in there for bottle conditioning, it it's completely different. So it's a good beer, but it doesn't fit the style of a saison technically. So very nice, very different, very unique beer. I think I like it. I don't chug. Don't know if I could drink a lot of this, like I said. This is a sort of like a celebration beer or a celebration beverage, if you will. It wouldn't be something you'd want to pop a cork on in once a week or maybe even not even once a month. Maybe once a year or, or once every couple of years. So very nice, very different style. Not in my style either, but I enjoyed this one. So far this has been the but kind of the best. Uh, the one I had yesterday, the, the, the oatmeal, was better than the pale. But this is a, a very nice beer. So uh, I hear that they make some nice beers. So uh, back, if, you, uh, if you're inclined to see anything else, to see if there's anything else available from this brewery instead of the uh, Cocoa Beach. Uh, like I said, I don't think Cocoa Beach, uh, they're, more, they're more of a transitional beer company, in my opinion. Uh, as opposed to a solid craft beer, and th and they both have their place in 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 in, uh, in the beer world. So we don't want to look down at them, be snobbish at them, but not quite enough taste for my palate. So a good entry level beer, but not for the advanced beer drinker. And I don't want to sound like snobbish. I'm an advanced beer drinker, but doesn't quite have enough taste for my palate. So that being said, guys, I'm gonna give this particular beer. It was very tasty. I'm going to give it an 8, which is an A minus. I think it's an A beer. I think it's very tasty. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad he sent it to me. It wouldn't be something that I would typically seek out, but 
It was a, it was very different, very unique. So if you've had this one, give me some comments back on this one. Whether you liked it or you're getting the same thing that I'm getting on this one. 2010 vintage on this one, according to the cork. So, uh, Beer Abbott comes up with 87, which is in their good range. And Rate Beer says 91 overall, which is basically their, their bottom end of their A ranges. And uh, 75 in the style. So they're not hip up on the style either. And neither was I. Like I said, great beer, but doesn't fit the typical say sound style because of the, the effervescence of it and, and the wild yeast that it was bottle conditioned with. And the tart the uh, the tartness is not bad. It's it's a kind of nice change, but the dark fruit is not typical of a to me of a saison. The, the plums, the dates, the raisins, the figs, and stuff like that. So that's my opinion, guys, on this one. Barry, thanks for sending this one up. Guys, if you've had this one, guys from Florida, I don't know what the distribution is on, on, on this uh, on this beer, uh, Saint somewhere. Uh, let me know if you've had it. You like it, didn't like it? As always, hit the like button if you like it. Rate, comment, subscribe. T-shirts are here. Got one or two openers here. I, I keep having people say, you got a dark one, you got a black one, got a dark blue one. Right now, guys, we got a, a regular red, we got a, a red one with a black dragon, and we got a dark blue one here. The only three that's left. First come, first serve. Speaking of serving, let's serve up another beer. Let's go see what's in the fridge.